Toasties. I'm Messy, here with my bestie Johnsy. Hey y'all. And welcome to our toasted shenanigans. How you doing? I'm fucking tired. Same. <laughs> Same. I'm going off no sleep. <laughs> I will say this week I'm not as tired as I was last week. Well that's good. That's an improvement. It's always good. Oh gosh. Last week was horrid. Last week I was off on Thursday and I had plans because it was Ostara and I was going to do a lot of gardening and all this other stuff because it was a gorgeous day. I slept. (laughs) Obviously you needed it though. Like literally all day slept. I think I woke up very brief and then I go back to sleep. I just slept the whole day and I was kind of upset because I slept my whole day away. And then I came home from work on Saturday and I slept from four to seven. You needed it. You Clearly. can't be mad at yourself. Clearly. You needed to recharge. The allergies kicked my ass. But hey, I did not lose my voice this March. There you go. There we go. Improvement. Improvement. <laughs> right? <laughs> Normally always in March. And I thought I was going to because I felt it in my throat because I could feel it happening. That's the worst. And you would think like, oh, stop talking because you should let your vocal cords rest. No. <laughs> I, you stop talking <laughs> that's what i was gonna say i don't know how to not talk i've gotten a detention for that <laughs> no pollen the, the pollen and stuff has not hit me yet but i went to somebody's house that had cats i was on like death's doorbed not literally but i felt like it. i was like i gotta go <laughs> oh my gosh no i this pollen, I don't know what it what it was. I literally, the only way I could describe how it felt all last week was that I was at, like, the poppy fields of Wizard of Oz. Like, I thought I was getting sick. That's how tired I was. Your body was just telling you you need a break. Like, slow the fuck down. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, my, that's why we actually recorded last week yeah. virtually because I was just... We didn't know if you were sick or not. I didn't know if I was sick, yeah. And I had to keep you away from me because you catch everything. Yeah. <laughs> I've done really good though recently. Ever since shut I up. D- oh, true, knock on fucking. Don't I am summon your demons. One. Sorry, that one's meant to be. But shut up. Ever, ever since my dad gave me those one vitamin, I'm in pretty good. Which ones again? It was like the. <laughs> this is probably not it. This is probably me just thinking of the band. But I think it was like D12. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> all I want to say is like I'm D12 baby. <laughs> All right, let's... My salsa. Let's, yeah. <laughs> My salsa. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyways, real quick about last week's episode anyways. Oh, yes. We, yes. we talked about the, the lovely Kate Middleton and mm-hmm. all the shit, bullshit fucking conspiracies mm-hmm. you all had out there. Um, and I say you all very vaguely if you're not part of them and you feel some sort of guilty type of way, you clearly were part of it. Um, right after we posted our episode, she came out with her video to talk about what was going on, mm-hmm. which was very nice of her. She didn't have to. She didn't owe that to fucking anybody. But no, apparently you guys didn't know how to leave them the fuck alone. So she did. And I understand why they were holding that back for a bit because that is very hard news to hear. And we were right in the end. Like. They need privacy. Just leave them fuck alone. Yeah. Cause, and that's what she said. They were just, they have little kids. Imagine trying to tell your little itty bitty kid, mommy has cancer. And then trying to explain what cancer is. Yeah. You know how hard that is? That's a devastating. She's early 40s, guys. That's young mm-hmm. for cancer. I mean, cancer can come at any age, so I don't mean it in that type of way. I actually can't stand when people try to put age on cancer. However. It's just more surprising. It is more surprising. And she's young. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot to process in general to anybody at any age Mm -hmm. that that's what they have. And they're still expected to smile and grin and grin and bear it. Not only that, just their their, their family alone, like they deserve that privacy. If they didn't want to come out and say it, then everybody should have been just respectful. Yeah. That's all it came down to was respect. Yeah. But... They deserve the privacy yeah. and just, I couldn't imagine. And I'm assuming she, they probably had their suspicions. And that's probably why they didn't give much detail. I think they did mess up in the sense that they instantly said, it's not cancer. Oh, yeah, definitely for sure. 
but they probably didn't know yet. They didn't need to say anything, honestly. They didn't owe that to anybody. They could have just said that she had a procedure. Which is what they did. But everybody freaked out and said that she was dead. Or well, that he was having an affair or all this other shit. No, they said... I, I read... I read that she was going in for a procedure and it's not cancer. That was the first thing I saw. Well, yeah, not at first, but probably once they got in there, they probably saw something alarming. I have a feeling they probably saw something alarming from the get-go and wanted to get in there and get it out and check it. And the only way to biopsy it was to remove it. Mm -hmm. So we're not sure what kind of cancer she has. They, She did say that it was caught very, very early and that she is going through chemo and radiation so don't start making speculations if she says losing her fucking hair it's the process you all know it leave them alone especially the kids do it for the fucking kids if you can't do it for anything else assholes mm -hmm. facts what are you drinking <laughs> oh um something local from ashland virginia yeah i've seen you drink that multiple times as well it's right up there with your hazies yeah but I've never, I don't think I've ever brought it to the podcast. Poca, no. It's Pocahoptus. Um, unfortunately, my ex-husband introduced me to it. Um, it was one of his go-tos. Um, but I found it rather tasty. Yeah, I know. You, I've seen you drink that one quite a lot. Yeah, I do like this one. I haven't seen you drink it in a while, though. You've been on the hazies for a while. Hazies and little something something. But mm -hmm. no, I like this one. Plus, it's got Pocahontas on the can. A variation of her, yes. Yes, but I give it a... An eight. I keep buying it every now and then. Mm -hmm. So, you want to try it? No. I've tried it. It's gross. Okay. What you got? I have the Bell Isle Blood Orange with Sprite, and it tastes just like an orange soda. It's very dangerous. <laughs> it goes down way too smoothly. Way too smoothly. Although, it's funny because I had that down there, and my mom saw the bottle, and, and I told she looked at me, and she I was like, oh, getting my drink for the podcast. And she just looked at me again. She's like, that's all you have? I'm like... Mom, this is moonshine. And she's like, oh, I thought that was wine. <laughs> I was like, no, you got to mix that shit. <laughs> I will be way too toasted to get through this episode, which is a really intense episode because we did talk about mm -hmm. Princess Kate. And we're going to be talking about a different princess of Wales. Mm -hmm. The lovely people's princess, the Princess Diana. Mm -hmm. Because we're on a conspiracy kick right now. It's fun. It is kind of fun. It's it's kind of fun to talk about all the theories and how some of them. Now with Kate Middleton, they're all fucking stupid. Well, <laughs> yeah, all of them were dumb. Yeah, every single one of them. All the theories that they had out there were fucking stupid. But this one. But this one. Things get a little serious. This one is very serious, and I mean, the woman does deserve rest. It's been years since she has passed, and she's still still talked about for. All the things that have gone on. Well, because and, people cared about her. They loved her. She was a boss. I mean, that's why she's still talked about. She's probably proud of it. Yes, she deserves rest, but she's probably proud of it. Probably. I just think that uh, my soft heart and children is like, though their kids are grown. Like, Well, to be fair, she put a lot of herself out there when her kids were little. So I don't think she minds it when they're grown. No, and honestly, some of her kids, the two that she has... Um, one in particular is a little bit much like her. Mm -hmm. And I love him. <laughs> but yes, we're talking about the lovely Princess Diana. But of course, I need to give a little bit of a syn synopsis of her mm -hmm. before the passing of Diana. Because you got to know a little bit of a background of who she is to understand some of these theories and what makes them so intense and crazy. And why some of them kind of make sense. And some of them are like, what the fuck? Where are you coming with that one in left field? Mm -hmm. Princess Diana was born the Honorable Diana Frances Spencer on July 1st, 1961 in Norfolk. And not Norfolk, Virginia. Obviously in England. I didn't want to put the whole... I mean, it was the longest name. And going over like what you were doing with Kate and like the places... Mm -hmm. It's complicated. And, and I was right? just like, fuck this. I'm just going to go straight to just like, okay, it's Norfolk. Uh, she later became Lady Diana Spencer in 1975 when her father inherited his earldom. And she was the youngest daughter of the then Viscount and Viscountess Althrop, now the late eighth Earl Spencer, and late, I'm assuming this is honorable, but they put H O N dot, Mrs. Shan Kidd, the daughter of the fourth Baron Fermoy. These are weird words. Bear with me. Um, this, We're not fucking English. <laughs> I'm not, and I'm not fucking royal. 
So yeah, we're I, screwed on both fronts. And I guess I just have not watched enough of these like royal shows to understand. Because Viscount, I've never heard that one. Mm-mm. And do you know how many times my thing tried to autocorrect to discount? <laughs> so Viscount Althrop was a query to George the Sixth from 1950 to 1952, mm-hmm. and for the Queen. From 1952 to 1954. Uh, Diana's parents married in 1954, but they separated in actually 1967. Mm -hmm. And their marriage was dissolved in 1969, which then he married Rain, Countess of Dartmouth, in 1976. But, though, if I remember correctly, he kept it very, like, hush-hush, which made it even more, like, suspicious. The marriage or the divorce? The marriage. Uh, like, he didn't tell his children or anybody. No, his children knew. His children, But not knew. for a while. Well, Diana actually and her sisters and brother lived with her father after the divorce. And Diana actually had a very poor relationship with her stepmother, describing her childhood as unhappy and unstable. Mm. So Diana had three other siblings. There was Sarah, who was born in 1955, Jane, who was born in 1957, and Charles, who was born in 1961. And she, like I said, she lived with her father at the Park House, uh, Park House Sandringham, till her grandfather passed, who was the seventh Earl Spencer. Mm-hmm. And when that happened in 1975, the family then moved to the Spencer seat at Althrop, which is a s- stately house dating from 1508 in Northamptonshire in the English Midlands. So this is like you're speaking Greek to me. Uh, no, I'm speaking England to you. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Facts. No offense, English listeners. We just don't understand. Just like you guys we're aren't. Not, we're not educated. Not in your guys' world. World. Just like you guys aren't of ours. Um, which, uh, total sidetrack. There is a TikToker, though, by Josh, who is from England and is just was totally infatuated with learning about america because he thinks like we're the things that we do here are crazy he looks at the things he's just like i don't understand and now he's just completely enthralled with america he loves america and has countless times defended us so thanks josh (laughs) so in school diana showed a particular talent for music she was an accomplished pianist dancing and and she was also a great at domestic science and she actually gained the school's award for her giving maximum help to the school and her fellow students. So even at a young age, she showed talent, she showed grace, and she showed giving kindness and caring. In 1977, she left to finish school in Switzerland at the Institut Alpen Vitaminet. I'm not sure. sure. (laughs) We'll go with it. (laughs) But then she ended up coming home. Um, after Easter in 1978. After that, she moved actually into a, what they call a flat, which is an apartment in London. And for a while, she actually looked after a child for an American family and was either an assistant to the kindergarten teacher or was a kindergarten teacher. I've heard two different things at the Young England School in Pimlico. So you can see like Diana had quite the title placement from the start. She, But not like a huge title. She didn't come from a huge background, well, not, but not for, like, blue blood. Well, even her grandmothers, Cynthia Spencer and Ruth Roche, were ladies-in-waiting to the queen. So her family worked for, were in that. They were in it. They worked for it, but they weren't the same level. Not what you would typically want your, to marry into. Mm, well, he was an earl. Her father was an earl. I don't know what the fuck that means, but he was an earl. And that sounds pretty high and mighty to me. So before the now King Charles married Diana, um, she did briefly date. He did briefly date. (laughs) I put a she in my notes. Fuck. He briefly dated her older sister, Sarah. Had they stayed together and married, maybe things would have been different. Then we wouldn't have this episode today. However, Lady Sarah wanted to marry for love. So that's why she did not stay with Charles because actually it was very pushed on that those two got married it looked like a perfect match on paper wait was sarah older than diana yes okay that makes sense okay yes 
Sarah, like I said, Sarah was born. I have to go back up now. No, you're good. 1955. Okay. Whereas Diana was 61. Yeah. So she was she was much older. But Sarah wanted wanted to marry for love and go her. So she actually married Neil McQuarkledale. <laughs> Quarkledale. <laughs> I probably totally whatever. It's a fun word. Butchered to say. that. All I could think of is is this man Scottish or Irish with the McCorkledale. But he was a farmer and a former officer with the Coldstream Guards at Great Brighton, Northamptonshire. And thank goodness they did. And they actually will be celebrating 44 years of marriage this year. So you go, girl. Because they married in May May 17th, 1980. So for them. they're coming up on 44 years. I'm happy for her. That goes to show that love does win. Yes. Also, other things show that I too. I could turn but, that around, but I won't because it's, yep. it's, it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just leave it. So Diana met Charles, though, through her sister uh, when he was dating her in 1977. He is 13 years older than her. Yep. Now, Charles took an interest in her in the summer of 1980, though, when they did end up reconnecting. And when they kind of did connect, the couple was the highlight of media during their courtship. They were an odd couple from the start. He was not only older, but he was a more reserved outdoorsman. He loved gardening, polo, all the things you would expect a royal to love. While she was very young, she was shy, and she was a lover of fashion and pop culture. Yeah, they were they were complete opposites. Polar opposites. Camila was definitely his type. Yes. We'll get into that. When Diana met his family, though, she was very well received by the Queen and Prince Philip, which actually I do believe that now. I'll get into that later, though. After a few short months, Charles proposed on February 3rd, 1981, which actually Diana was so shocked she thought he was joking. Yeah, because they only went, like, if I remember correctly, they only went on, like, 13 dates in between those well, since they reconnected. they started dating the summer of 80. And he's already proposing February of 81. Well, yeah, because it was pushed on him by his father. No. Um, which, like I said, she was joke. She thought he was joking. And I can, uh, fair. I thought Lloyd was joking when he first proposed to me. I literally thought I was being punked. But then on February 6th, three days later, 1981, he proposed with a 18 karat white gold ring topped with 12 karat oval Cylon sapphire surrounded by 14 solitary diamonds. And that damn ring cost $35,000 at the time. I was not going to do the inflation math on that. You guys can go ahead and do that on your own. Thirty-five grand to me already. I'll do it for you. Thirty-five grand to me already. It's a beautiful ring. Oh, yeah, it was a fucking beautiful ring. But thirty-five grand to me at now, today, is like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so during an interview, though, following the engagement, they were asked if they were in love. And Diana Young... Young, sweet Diana, who... Okay, give me it. About 132000 The fuck? Yeah. No, thank you. Ow, I just hit my tooth with my straw. I hurt that. That hurt. <laughs> During an interview following the engagement, they were asked um, if they were in love. And like I said, Diana, who was very young, completely smitten. I mean, she had a fairy tale moment. She's dating the Prince of England, mm-hmm. who out of nowhere is like, she was chosen. And she followed the answer of, of course, Mm -hmm. because she's on cloud nine. I mean, she's living, like I said, that fairy tale. I think everybody would be like, oh, yeah, I'm fucking in love. Bro is ugly, though. That's all I'm (sighs) saying. Even back in the day. But, you know, you do you, boo-boo. Maybe the title does do something for you. It doesn't do anything for me. But anyways, we'll we'll keep going. Charles said, quote, whatever in love means. That wasn't in love. That was his response to that question. And then he followed it stating that in love is open to interpretation. And I've seen that interview and that is exactly he, she was just, like I said, she looked like a kid in a candy store. Mm -hmm. Just as most girls are when they are getting engaged and starting to plan their wedding. Well, yeah, she was in it from the beginning, but he never was. And he was not. He he was just like, "Mm, sure. Yeah, whatever. They were wed July 29th, 1981, and of course, the wedding was broadcasted for many to watch. And here at their wedding is where Diana actually broke one of the first traditions of the royal family. During the vows, they are use- they are to use the term obey, and she omitted the word from their vows, which caused quite the criticism. So you got young little lady... And she's already breaking some royal rules. 
I like her. Badass. Um, but that was kind of where a lot of people, when after she passed, were like, whoa. I mean, even during everything. Getting off track here. Staying focused. <laughs> <laughs> Overwhelmed by her duties in the media, though, she started to work towards her own. She was very, very overwhelmed right away from the start mm-hmm. with her royal duties. And instantly, the, I mean, the moment that those two started to date, instantly paparazzi was a thing on her. Oh, yeah. Because, again, like I said, you had this odd couple that just something didn't seem right about the match. And they knew it. So let's exploit it for money. And so she decided she was going to start her own little things that make her excited and happy. And so overwhelmed by her duties in the media because she was always, always in the public eye in the media, constantly having paparazzi, constantly having people following her and watching her. She decided to start working on things that were of her own. And as you guys know, she was very big into like the AIDS and HIV mm-hmm. stuff that was going on. I mean, it's the 80s. That was real big then. Yep. As well as helping a lot of children and mm-hmm. other things like that. She had She's a, amazing. She had a lot, a lot of um, charisma. She got a lot of bullshit. Yeah. If this was an English game of bullshit, she called bullshit multiple times. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. She just had a lot of things that she was very, she was very passionate about. She, mm-hmm. Again, like I said, she just won. She's very honest most she, of the time. She won the award at her school, though, what, as a child for being the most giving. Mm-hmm. So it was no surprise that she did what she did. So everybody knows that Diana's the mother to Prince William and Prince, because I'm always going to be calling him that, Harry. Mm-hmm. I don't care that he lost that title. He will always and forever be Prince Harry. And at 12 weeks, when she was pregnant with William... Diana actually threw herself down the stairs Mm -hmm. because she was uh, very unhappy in her marriage. Fortunately, as we all know, William is okay. Or maybe, maybe. I won't get into that. After William, though, she actually, unfortunately, very much suffered from postpartum depression. And when William was only nine months old, Diana couldn't bear the thought of being away from him. So here she goes breaking yet another tradition. And she took William with her when she was supposed to go to New Zealand and Australia for a six-week tour. Though that was frowned upon by the royals, it was very, very, very well received in the public. And she w- received much applause. because at, she should. Because at this point, to them, that's a working mother. Yeah. And the, it's something that they can connect with. It made her even more personable. Yeah. It made her real. She was not only a royal who was doing her job and doing duties. She did it while still being Mm -hmm. a mother. And they loved it. So it was said, however, during her pregnancy with Harry is when actually her relationship with Charles was, as she put it, quote, the closest they have ever, ever been. Hmm. It was the perfect marriage she always wanted with him. And it was wonderful and beautiful and just everything perfect. And Charles wanted a girl. So, unfortunately, when Diana discovered she was actually having a boy, she hid it from him in fear that it would ruin what they had. What they had. And, unfortunately, when Harry was born and Charles discovered it was a boy, his first words were, oh, God, it's a boy. And that is when Diana knew her marriage was down the drain, in her words. And so it was. Because soon after that, they became estranged from one another. And reports of infidelity on both of them mm-hmm. were made. Now, Diana, her infidelity was with James Hewitt from 1986 to 1999. And, of course, as we all know, Charles was with Camilla. Mm -hmm. They were reported to be so visibly miserable that the media dubbed them the glums. And that's, that's sad. That's really sad. But that's the UK media for you. Oh, yeah. So, 1992, it was announced the separation of Charles and Diana. And by the urgency of the queen, Mm -hmm. they divorced officially uh, August of 1996. Yeah, because there was all that shit going back and forth in the UK media. It was just looking back. They were phone tapping each other. It was. Things were saying. Did you like? Did you see the one that was said that Prince Charles came out and said that he wished that he could be Camilla's like tampon? He was recorded saying that. That's disgusting. Well, he. The infidelity things all came out because he did get on the rate on the TV and say, yes, I am in a relationship with two women, basically. He said he's having an affair with Camilla on their Mm -hmm. television. 
which then was later confirmed with Diana in another interview years later. Yes. That he said that while they were still married, Mm -hmm. which is why the queen was like, divorce. You just said that out loud. You now have to divorce her. You dumbass. Well, they were also getting tired of the back and forth. I mean, the royals were with all of the stupid media shit that was going back and forth between Diana, her scandals, and then his scandals that were all being released. It made them look like fools. So they they had to cut it off. They were being very immature. Mm -hmm. Both of them at that point. Yes. Because they were both calling out on the media purposely. Yeah. And like I said, it was due to two of the TV interviews. um, One where Charles basically admitted of his infidelities with Camilla. And the other was where Diana confirmed the infidelities Mm -hmm. with the quote saying, and I've seen this interview as well, where she said, quote, well, there were three of us in this marriage. So it was a bit crowded. And quote. Yeah. Everybody's seen that interview. Everybody saw that. And that is when the queen shut him down. And rightfully so. Diana was, however, allowed to keep her apartment at the palace. Mm-hmm. As well as other apartments she was able to use as well as long as she gave advance, got advance permission. And she also had access to the jets that the royals were using. Uh, Charles did stop paying her bills once in a divorce, which altered her lifestyle. Um, but Diana... She still walked away with, like, $35 million. She's still living in the fucking palace. Yeah, and walks away with $35 million and has this other, like, royalties amount to fucking live life with and run her office. So it's not like... They didn't treat her bad oh, when no, she's walking no, no. away. If anything, the queen was pissed because she got to keep all of her royal jewels, which was a big no-no. No, again. That was a rumor. Diana was able to keep all her titles. She was forever... She was allowed to keep her Princess of Wales... Um, however, she was stripped of the title Her Royal Highness, which then forced her to have to curtsy to her former family members as well as her ex-husband and children. The queen was willing to let her keep all her titles. It was Charles who was very adamant that she gets them taken away. Oh, no, I'm talking about the jewels. If the queen was going to let her keep everything else, then why couldn't she keep her jewels? Which jewel? Were they the were they, they were queens? Royal, yes, things that were passed down. Yes, because like the crown that she wore was actually her family's crown. No, the not, Spencer's we're crown. We're not talking about. I don't know exactly, but I know like the there was a article I read that the queen had a uh, a lot of distaste because of the crown jewels that she got to keep that were in the family that she should not have been able to keep. Hmm. Titles I know she was stripped of. She was only stripped of one, and that was her Royal royal Highness. Mm -hmm. She is still considered Princess of Wales. And she still had her responsibilities. Yes. And um, obviously, she had to give up any claim to the throne as well. Mm -hmm. Which I was like, duh. You're you're divorced from the prince. Why would you have any rights to it? But I guess if you're still technically Princess of Wales... You technically still have, yeah. But, but I don't think she really wanted it. Anyways. She'd have a chance at that throne as much as Harry does. Correct. So who cares that it, she lost it? But after the divorce, she continued her royal duties and continued all her own charity work. And she still had the protection of the uh, the royalty protection officers. But she actually refused them other than when she was with her sons. And, of course, Charles, obviously, after the divorce, moved on to Camilla. So Diana, too, though, she had other relationships after her divorce, and one was with a British-Pakistani heart surgeon, Hasnat Khan, um, who was described actually to be the love of her life. Mm -hmm. And that was from 1995 to 1997. And the other was um, Egyptian film producer and playboy Dottie Fade in 1997, and she was actually with him till the day that they both passed. Mm -hmm. It was reported... That some of the members of the royal family and former Prime Minister Tony Blair did not approve of that relationship. That one was not very well received. Now, we all know how the lovely Diana, Princess of Wales, died. While visiting Paris, she had gotten into a car crash on August 31st, 1997, and trying to escape the paparazzi, the driver, and Dottie, who was with her at the time they died at the scene, Mm-hmm. While Diana actually survived the crash, however, she did die from her injuries at a Paris hospital a few hours later, and she was but only 36 years old. And this is where our conspiracy talk is now going to come into play. Okay. I have quite a few listed out here, some that supposedly have facts to back up why it's a myth, 
but even still, it's questionable. But obviously, first and foremost, I have to bring up the one of the queen. Mm -hmm. Because everybody, I remember seeing it on headlines. I remember seeing it. I remember seeing it everywhere. Mm -hmm. The queen did it. It was the queen. She killed her because she hated her. She despised her. She thought she was disgusting. She thought she was this. She thought she was that. It is all a lie. And there was a recent um, documentary that came out that talked about that. It was shortly after Prince Philip actually passed away because it was supposed to be about Prince Philip. And of course, Diana was brought up into that. Mm -hmm. Um, That talked about Diana, but they did talk about Diana, especially also because of the crown the, sh- the TV show mm-hmm. thing on Netflix is why they made it a point to talk about all this kind of stuff. The queen actually adored Diana and mm-hmm. Prince Philip adored Diana. Yes. Not towards the end. Not towards the end. According to this documentary, yes, he did. And actually when she passed away, well, he too, he was one of the t- people who did not approve of her relationship mm-hmm. with Dottie. Mm-hmm. Yes, that part, but he had nothing... It had nothing to do with hating her, though. He did not like Dottie. Yeah, he didn't approve of the relationship because what it would look like on the royal family for for you to have a mixed heritage with royalty. Which I'll get into because that is actually in the conspiracy. Mm-hmm. But actually, the queen had to be forced to actually finally make a public statement about Diana. Mm-hmm. Because she was so devastated, she couldn't bear to get out there and talk about it. And her people were like, you got to get out there, like, and say something to your people. They're they're just as hurt as you are, but they need you to uplift them. They need you to get out there. It took her a couple of days to finally get up and speak. It actually wasn't until September 5th that she finally was able to get out there and speak. And there was a lot of criticism for her not immediately responding to it. But she did eventually get out there and it was quoted, one of the things she had said is, no one who knew Diana will ever forget her. Millions of others who never met her but felt they knew her will remember her. I, for one, believe there are lessons to be drawn from her life and from the extraordinary and moving reaction to her death. I share in your determination to cherish her memory. Now, she was devastated. Prince Philip when the whole fiasco was going on with Charles and Camilla and Diana, he, when they finally, I think, got divorced, wrote her a private, like, letter. Mm-hmm. Well, he encouraged their marriage all along. He told them that, he, like, you guys need to make this work. He told Diana, I'm so sorry my son, basically said, I'm sorry my son's a fuck up. Mm-hmm. You deserve better than what he is. Yeah, the, I'm not saying, like, Philip. And Elizabeth were completely disappointed in their son. Oh, they were like, very disappointed. Yeah. that They were like, out of all the kids we could have had, this is the one. Like, they weren't happy with him at all. No. He was the next in line. Mm-hmm. So he had to look apart, and he was fucking it up he left and right. He never looked apart. Oh, I know. Never. I know. William's doing a good job of being a toy soldier, though. <laughs> but his dad was never. And following an investigation into Diana's fatal car crash... One of the theories was it was reported that the driver was at fault mm-hmm. and for driving at high speeds mm-hmm. while under the influence of alcohol and antidepressants. Mm-hmm. Charges were dropped against several po- photographers, photographers who were initially blamed for the car crash. Um, and despite the report, rumors, and stuff that persisted of the accident, because it was originally stated that the accident happened because of they were trying to escape paparazzi now diana was horrifically harassed by paparazzi horrifically but there is also facts and proven that she caused a lot of it where she would tip off the paparazzi just to make a scene i believe it i wouldn't she played it just as much as everybody else did exactly she was a smart woman but she played it to her advantage. This situation, did she play it? No. But she did come out and say that there was an important announcement that she was going to say. Yes, I know. I know. I think we're on the same wavelength here as to where we're going. Maybe. 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 Anyways. So, she was horrifically harassed, though. Yes, she was. 
I mean, she may have tipped him off and may have egged it a little bit, but there were times it did get too far. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, though, because of this, one of her sons is horrifically damaged by it. Correct. He's working through that, and he's not punching paparazzi in the face anymore. Good job. But it did damage him Mm -hmm. because he's told that's how his mom died. Mm -hmm. So the first one, murder or accident. The allegation, Muhammad al Fade. Dottie's father believes Diana and Dottie were the victims of a murder plot involving the British security services Mm -hmm. and Prince Philip, who acted before the couple could announce their engagement. Mm -hmm. So that goes to what you said. But it wasn't just an engagement. Prince Philip, like you said, did not agree, was among the the few that did not agree to Mm -hmm. the couple. I personally think she wouldn't have lasted with him very long. I think Diana didn't know what she wanted. Yeah, me she personally. Was, she, was, she was seeking love, and that's all she ever wanted. And she was try- just trying to chase it anywhere she got it. She had daddy issues. Yeah, definitely. With her past. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely she daddy had da- issues. She had daddy issues, and she was trying to find somebody to fill that void. So the investigation, British coroner Lord Justice Scott Barker, Baker said that there was no evidence to support his theory and that there was a conspiracy involving the British Secret Services and Prince Philip, um, which is the late husband of Queen Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. And Fade requested for a judicial review linked to the coroner's inquest Mm -hmm. was denied. Forensic experts Angela Gallup examined evidence related to the 1997 car crash and found no grounds to support a murder claim. Mm -hmm. It looked very much like a very big accident, car accident. So... No matter how much you looked at it, from just the outside looking in, they did not suspect murder. But there's more. I have more. Allegation number two, or conspiracy number two, was Diana pregnant. She said she had a big announcement. Mm -hmm. Correct? So, the Dottie's dad also claimed that Princess Diana was pregnant with Dottie's baby. Mm -hmm. And his theory was fueled by a, a 2003 article in The Independent citing an unnamed senior French police source suggested a cover-up of the pregnancy. After investigation, Rose Man- Mancaton, sorry, a close friend of Diana, said that she was actually with Princess the princess shortly before her death, and she knew for sure that Diana was not pregnant. And forensics expert Angela Gallup analyzed Diana's stomach contents for Operation Pageant, which is the Metropolitan Police Inquiry, and also said Diana was not pregnant. There was absolutely no pregnancy in her autopsy whatsoever. See, I researched the opposite. So what I read was that his dad, Muhammad, mm-hmm. was actually told by both of them. Mm-hmm. And then that's when they kind of went to the jewelers. And that was the only reason why they were announcing the engagement. And that's why they were spotted at the place. What was it like? The the yes me rings or whatnot. Uh, I knew that they I were going to get engaged. Know. I knew that yeah, was. They were definitely getting engaged. They were definitely getting engaged. But. What I had researched was that he was actually told that by both of them. Yeah, he he claimed that a lot. Um, Number three, there was a flash, they Mm -hmm. claimed. So did a flash of light distract driver Henry Paul in the dark tunnel? Now, the allegation said, did someone deliberately disorient driver Henry Paul by flashing a light in the dark tunnel? Former MI6 Agent Richard Tomlinson, who was dismissed by the British Security Services, told Muhammad al Fade, Dottie's dad, that security services planned to sabotage Serbian leader Slodan Milosevic by dazzling a flashing light in a tunnel to cause a fatal crash, which sounds eerily similar to Diana's situation. So that flashing light was supposed to be for somebody else and maybe Diana was in the wrong spot. But in an investigation, Tomlinson backtracked on a statement while testifying at an inquest in 2008, saying he may have confused his details. A second MI6 witness told the inquest that such a document had been drawn up, but denied Milo Milosevic was the target and noted his MI6 superiors dismissed the plan as out of the question. Well, of course they're going to say that. Right? So this one does leave a, a eerie suspicion, right? That one is an allegation and their investigation kind of doesn't... Especially because he didn't work for them anymore. And he wasn't working. <laughs> well, he wasn't on the clock. Two of them. Yeah. Two of them weren't on the clock. Well, the driver, Henry, 
Mm-hmm. And this man who said this, and then all of a sudden he backtracked. But he was dismissed. I want to know where the flash of light came from, though, because there's no witnesses. There's no s- suddenly all the cameras that are, are there are private cameras that weren't recording. Yeah. So and there's something in here that talks about that that contradicts this number two's conspiracy, right? Mm-hmm. So number four or number three. Sorry, that was number three's conspiracy. This is number four. Was the British Special Air Services, the SAS, involved? For decades, some conspiracy theorists have believed the SAS was involved. Scotland Yard even launched a probe after an ex-soldier known as Soldier N allegedly claimed that the princess was murdered by the Special Forces unit who flashed a light using a technique developed to combat terrorists. So this is where that flash of light situation comes in again, right? Mm -hmm. Soldier N keep his name very vague, they don't have any question, anything, um, claims about Diana's death were sent to police in July of 2013 after the court-martial of another SAS sniper, Soldier N, was initially given two years detention for his part, then retired and given a suspended two-year jail term. Scotland Yard dismissed reports that SAS troops were behind Diane and Dottie's death, insisting there was no credible evidence. Look at that picture. Bright light. Mm-hmm. Kind of blaring in their face. Yeah, that's the bodyguard, the driver, Diana in the back. How'd they get this picture, first off? Yeah, I was about to ask the same question. Mm-hmm. There's no cameras. Where'd the picture come from? Was Henry Paul a spy? Number five. Allegation. XMI mi 6 officer Tomlinson initially accused Henry Paul of being a paid MI6 informant, mm-hmm. then later said he couldn't be certain... And writer-broadcaster Gerald Posner said an NSA source told him that Henry Paul had a meeting with a member of the French DGSE direction. I'm so sorry. I'm not even going to attempt that. My French today is not the best. (laughs) On the evening he died, the London inquest heard that Paul was carrying uh, 1,250 francs i'm assuming that's what that symbol is in cash which is about a hundred one thousand five hundred dollars adding fuel to the fire Uh, upon investigation in the great hall of mirrors it is difficult to know if paul was a spy dgse denied knowledge of paul but two documents in the french judicial dossier of judge hervé stefan showed a link between paul and the the d I'm so sorry. Direction de la surveillance de ter- territoire, the domestic French intelligence agency that deals with espionage. Paul may not have been a paid MI6 in- informer, but Lord Stevens believed he was likely a low level informant for the French secret services and police. So that's still sticky, kind of where you were just saying a little mm. bit ago. Number six was henry paul drunk when he crashed in the paris tunnel Mm. the allegation while henry paul was described as drunk before he left the ritz with princess diana Dottie fade and the bodyguard trevor reese jones there was no consensus among witnesses and some even thought he was sober Mm -hmm. so how much did henry paul really drink investigation is french french investigators concluded that Paul's alcohol level was three times the legal limit. Laws differ across Europe, however, so by other measures, Paul was only twice the British legal limit. In any event, he was over the legal limit if the blood samples were were actually his. Professor Althol Johnston, Mm -hmm. a clinical pharmacologist, told investigators that one of the blood samples was probably not even Paul's, but Mm. other experts disagreed. In any event, if there was a mix-up, the authorities decided it was likely an accident. Number seven, and I remember reading about this one and hearing Mm -hmm. this a lot. Did someone tamper with the seatbelts of the Mercedes? I remember people saying that her car was tampered with and that's why it crashed, Mm -hmm. is because he couldn't stop it. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, the allegation, according to British tabloid newspapers, detectives examined evidence that the seatbelt fastening pins were filed down. 
but then again, detective examined every inch of the car so it wouldn't be unusual to check theories related to the seatbelts. But after investigation, while much was made of Diana's propensity to wearing a seatbelt, she was not wearing one Mm -hmm. on the evening of the fatal crash. Mm -hmm. Both French and British examined examinations of the Mercedes found no mechanical issues that could have caused or contributed to the crash. There was no defect in the seatbelt system. Number eight, why were none of the CCTV cameras in the tunnel operating at the time of the crash? Mm -hmm. Allegation was according to the independent newspaper, there were at least 14 CCTV cameras in that tunnel, yet none recorded footage of the fatal collision leading to speculation of high-level conspiracy. Yet, the investigation, in my opinion, says otherwise. Pascal Pauline was the room commander on Saturday, August 30th, 1997, and he told investigators that the staff tried to use the cameras in the Place de la um, Alme to view the crash site, but it was impossible according to the Operation Paget inquiry. Quote, the screen showed only a blurred yellow light. We tried to manipulate the camera that is used to zoom and maneuver it in vain. We did not have control. By that, I mean that another section must have been using the camera and manipulating it, but it could also have been due to it being out of order, end quote. So there was a bright yellow light Mm -hmm. that was blurring the vision of the cameras. Mm Mm-hmm. And they couldn't manipulate it because either it was out of order or someone else was manipulating it for them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Number nine, was the paparazzi involved? The allegation, Diana was constantly hounded by paparazzi right up until her death. Mm-hmm. And could the photographers chasing the Mercedes have caused the accident or been part of a larger conspiracy? In the investigation, neither the French nor English investigators found a criminal conspiracy in regard to the paparazzi. Despite allegations, they were deliberately chasing the car. Instead, France fined them one euro each for invasion of privacy, yet rumors persist about a paparazzi conspiracy and, in particular, about the role of a photographer, James Andenson. Now, to say that the paparazzi killed her, per se, like they did on purpose, seems a little out of reach for what a paparazzi does. I just want to say that, in my Mm -hmm. opinion. So to put the blame on them, to me, was a cop-out. Yes. That was the easiest thing to do. And unfortunately, all that caused was stress and drama. But that's all what the tabloids had to say. Mm Mm-hmm. What happened to the mysterious white Fiat Uno? Mm Mm-hmm. Did a white Fiat Uno collide with the Princess Diana's black Mercedes before Henry Paul? drove into the tunnel. Some media identified the driver of the Fiat as ex-security guard Levan Dan, who denies any involvement. Others named photographers like James, who died in a car fire in May of 2000, reportedly with a hole in his head, Hmm. triggering even more conspiracy theories. And then again, upon investigation, witness Sabine Dozon said she saw a white Fiat Uno with Paris license plate emerge from the tunnel after the crash, and described a tan driver, a muzzled dog in the back, mm-hmm. and the car's shattered taillight. Martine Maté of France, interviewed in the Channel 4 documentary Investigating Diana, was among the first to arrive at the crash site, found white paint on the Mercedes, bits of broken tailgate, and tiny pearls belonging to the princess. Nothing, however, is conclusive. So those are some, but there is more. But wait, there's more. There's so many fucking conspiracy theories on what happened. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. And they're just crazy. So again, the pregnancy being one of them, Mm -hmm. but it was concluded after blood testing and everything like that, she was not pregnant. um, Royal blood testing. Let's keep that in mind. hmm? That's their results. So if they wanted to bury something, they could. Oh, I'm sure. So again, like you said, according to Muhammad, um, he said the reason for killing was Diana had become pregnant with his son's child and said that the idea was unpalatable to the British states. Mm-hmm. 
and that the royal family could not accept that an Egyptian Muslim could eventually be the stepfather to the king of England. Mm -hmm. And so they plotted to kill her off. Mm -hmm. Discussions of the potential pregnancy came up even before Diana died. And during a holiday in France a few weeks before, some newspapers speculated that she might be pregnant. And that speculation was buoyed upon, uh, buoyed up by mysterious comments of Diana's big surprise. But again, there was no signs of pregnancy during the post-mortem examination and further tests on Diana's blood found there was no signs of pregnancy there either. And there's no evidence even that Diana suspected she may be pregnant and numerous close friends and others said that her menstrual cycle was normal and that she actually was on contraceptives. And she never, to them, even mentioned the possibility of being pregnant to her closest confidants. Mm -hmm. Diana believed she was going to be killed by the establishment. She said it herself. like Multiple times. Multiple times. They're going to kill me. Mm -hmm. And she actually wrote a letter to um, one of her butlers about it, who, where it was said to keep in a, he kept in a safe spot. And it was quoted in this letter by her. I'm sitting here at my desk today in October, longing for someone to hug me and encourage me to keep strong and hold my head high. This particular phrase in my phase in my life is the most dangerous. Blank is planning an accident in my car, brake failure and serious head injury in order to make the path clear for Charles to marry, end quote. And this was something that she Mm -hmm. had said herself and like said diana had multiple multiple times stated she did not feel safe yeah but when she wrote that letter to her butler she referenced another woman that wasn't camila no it was another like little fling thing that the woman denied and is happily married to this day but yeah she kind of felt in her heart of hearts like something was going to happen Mm -hmm. at the behalf of charles oh i'm sure but she did have a clear uh, clear concerns for her safety and um just didn't, didn't knew somebody was going to harm her and her butler ended up dying with her or her bodyguard ended up dying with her at the at her crash and then again paparazzi is all always the big one saying that they chased her they pushed her car into the wall all the all the things mm-hmm. right and then again the driver henry paul and his involvement in secret secret services mm-hmm. and other types of things but he died as well because he was he was the easiest to get rid of he was retired he wasn't with them anymore but they could still use him because he was unfriendly he was on a friendly basis with them he was easily manipulated clearly um again there was the speculation that someone had tampered something with her car Mm -hmm. i've read about that one which is why it went fast and all that other kind of stuff and then again the bright lights one of the biggest ones too as to how and why she died because like i said the driver Mm -hmm. And Dottie and the bodyguard all died at the scene. She was still alive. Mm-hmm. And it was reported that paparazzi was in there taking pictures of her while she was still alive laying on the ground. Because mm-hmm. she even said to them, like, just leave me alone as she's slowly dying from her head injury. Yeah, because it should have taken them 15 minutes to get her to the hospital, but it actually took them 25 minutes to get her to the hospital. They took the longest route possible to get to the hospital. Now, according to research, in here and in England, when an accident happens and an ambulance shows up, their job is to just get you to the hospital as quickly as possible. Apparently in France, that they don't work that way. They try to help as much as they can at the scene before they take you to the hospital. And they did not help her properly at the scene, first and foremost. And then they did take the longest route to the hospital. Apparently, the hospital was actually closer than 12 minutes. It was, like, all of but, like, six. But they did. They took, like, they drove around town. They didn't even flash their lights to get her there. Nothing. They acted like they were just driving. Well, one of the biggest issues was too was that when they showed up there and supposedly you know got her heart beating again and whatnot they got her back to the hospital everything was honky dory moments later all of a sudden she has a heart attack Mm -hmm. somehow they didn't realize that her heart had moved to the right side of her chest oh that's fun like that's a big fuck up for a doctor yeah big time like how do you how do you not realize that Mm -hmm. this like 
either way, any way you look at this, like it's some kind of cover up. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. It's some kind of cover up for something. It's, it comes down to what you believe, what you want to come down to uh, out of all the theories, what makes the most sense to you. But either way, if it was hard, cold facts, we'd have hard, cold facts and we don't about any of this. Mm-hmm. So something obviously happened. That woman, that woman's death was planned. You can't convince me any other ways. Yes. And I will. I agree with you. Now, I have my theory of what that big announcement was. Okay. Um, But I want to hear yours. All right. So I, I, I do kind of, I am kind of convinced about the whole Mohammed thing. Like, because he spent way too much time, way too much money, caused way too much of a stink for no reason. He didn't benefit from this. And he carried it on for a while. For a long while. Into the 2000s. Yeah. Like, it was ridiculous. Like, he wouldn't let it go. And he swore that she was pregnant. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have the test results, yada, yada. But the only part that convinced me of all that, and I'm still not so sure of it, but the only part that convinced me of that is Philip. And Philip was shysty. He was. Oh, yeah. And he pushed his son into marrying that woman. He never wanted to marry Diana. No. And he pushed Charles into marrying her. Now, here's the thing where it gets really shysty that nobody talks about anymore is that man. Which one? Philip had four sisters. Okay. Three of them married into the Nazi army. You can't tell me that those women that were raised by the same family he was married into the Nazi family and he didn't say she had the same beliefs as them because they all came from the same family. They all kind of had to feel the same kind of way. So the fact where I see is that, yes, you're bringing um, another heritage into the royal family that you have distaste for. I can totally see him, Philip. Totally. And he wasn't that great of a king. No, he wasn't king, so. And... Elizabeth was just a shysty. You know my feelings on the royal family. Yes. Very racist. Yes. But that's not what the story is about. No. But I can see where that theory is going. But that's not what I believe in. I do believe she was killed by international arms. Okay. So before... So you think Charles is is clear of this as well? Correct. Okay. Okay. So... So we're not on the same, same wavelength. No. I'll tell you that. So... Before Diana passed, you know, she was still involved in her royal duties and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the things that she was very passionate about was um, in Africa, there were still a lot of landmines. Yes. So she was very big on helping find the abandoned landmines. That was one of her big project. Yep. Well, she ended up ultimately getting them permanently moved internationally. You just fucked with a lot of people's money doing that. She did. That is true. A shit ton of money. You are going to be targeted for that. Mm. You're not just talking about like one company. We have multiple companies Mm -hmm. that make landmines that can no longer, you know, process them, make them. No, she's got a price on her head. And ultimately, that's what I believe it came down to. And yes, I do think the um, MI6 definitely had involvement. Was the royal family aware of it? I'm not sure. Would mm-hmm. it hurt their feelings? Probably not, because still at the end of the day, they have distaste for it, so they probably would look the other way. But ultimately, I believed that she was killed by international arms. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Because she cost a lot of rich people a lot of fucking money by doing that. So I didn't, I read it more that she got them removed out of like the, to clear out the abandoned Mm -hmm. ones that were in the ground, not necessarily banning them from being made. Correct. Um, so. But it went further. But I, so I. Her movement made it go further. Okay. Because I know they're still made. So I don't see that being too effective for them. Um, now here's the thing going through this, you know, Charles is with Camilla. Mm Mm-hmm. Why didn't they date? In the, why didn't they continue that relationship in the first place? Because Pr- Philip and Elizabeth would not allow it because she was not a virgin. Not necessarily just that. Camilla was already with her husband prior to 
Charles and her dating. They weren't married. No, but she had relations with him. She was on again, off again mm-hmm. with Andrew. It was in the and it was in the tabloids. She was always on again, off. They had an on again, off again relationship the whole time. And Camilla seems to like to just bounce from boy to boy. She was known at more of not even just the lack of being a virgin. She was she was known to be very ugly, mm-hmm. but she had an earthy sexuality. That is how she was described. She was described. She was a as slut. A, yeah, a very uh, and a very huge, as you would say, tomboy. She was one of the guys. She was always around them. Yeah, because she was a slut. Mm-hmm. She and she was known for it. And at the end of the, I mean, I'm just putting it very vaguely. But yeah. You're right. You're one hundred percent right. They put, but her. Oh shit. shit. They put it. They put it very nicely in in all the writings. But at the end of the day, the what they're saying is she was a slut. So while she was with Andrew, and they're on again, off again, whatever. Andrew went on deployment, and that is when Charles and Camilla met. And Charles instantly smitten, wanted to throw Mm -hmm. everything and anything he had at her, and she played along with it. She loved it. She enjoyed it. And then Charles got sent away on deployment. Mm -hmm. And then Andrew came home and they got, that is when they got engaged and married. Now, Andrew's family forced that marriage between Camilla and Andrew. She didn't want to marry him. She loved him. And the family said that she loved him. Both families said they loved each other. They Mm -hmm. loved each other. But I don't think Camilla liked being tied down at that time in her life. She liked playing the field. She enjoyed sex. Go you girl. I'm not shaming you on that one. But for the royal family and her sexual endeavors, it did not look pretty on them. It didn't look good for Charles. They did not want their son to be known to be with the town slut. The the king, the soon to be king, married the town slut. Is yeah, no, what they, they, they that didn't is want that. that is how they envisioned. She had more of a title than Diane had, which was perfect. She was more blue blood. Actually, she had less title. No, she had more. She had more. She was more connected to the throne than Diana was. She had a higher title. But they said no because of her relations with what Andrew. Was her, what was her title? Because I know... I can't remember to be honest with I you. I know I that Diana was a lady. I don't know what Camilla yeah. was. As far as as far as far the world saw her, she was the town slut. And but that, yeah, that's they what did ruined it, it. They didn't want the king to be the... Mm-hmm. For, the new... The, mm-hmm up and coming king to be with the town the town slut. And I'm sorry if that offends anybody, but that's essentially That was the facts. I'm saying it in the way that I'm We ta- would say it here. I'm telling you what they were thinking. Mm-hmm. They were they were royalty so they had to use prettier words, but that's what they were saying. Um <laughs> but you know her her boyfriend was on deployment so she was fucking around with Charles. Charles got sent away on deployment so she went back to her boyfriend and then they got married. Mm-hmm. Charles was heartbroken yes devastated because mm-hmm. he was willing to he didn't care what anybody he said. was seen heartbroken it was recorded it was recorded Heart- heartbroken that is why he took diana and yes she was more virgin like and pure like and all the things but at that point because he was so heartbroken by camilla he didn't care and she literally was picked because it was all there was left I mean, you dude's 30. Yeah, his, he was being pushed by his parents. Like, you have to marry. You yeah, because he was in his 30s. You and have he to still create was, a hair. He like, wasn't, yeah, he wasn't like, married yet. So that is the only reason him and Diana married. Now, recently, and I don't know why I saved this in my phone. I have no idea why I kept this in my phone. October of 2022. Mm-hmm. All right. No idea why. I had kept this. No idea why I needed to always have this in my screenshot of whatever. Okay. Um, In October of 2022, a man named Simon Charles came out Mm -hmm. stating he is the son of Charles and Camilla. Mm, Never heard that one. When Charles was 17 and Camilla was 18 when they met. He was the love child of the two of them. Mm -hmm. He was conceived in 1965. He was, it was found out Camilla was pregnant with this Mm -hmm. kid. And the queen had him sent to New Zealand after he was 
born because she didn't want people to find out her son was having a kid with somebody he's not even married to. Yeah, out of wedlock. Mm-hmm. So he was raised in New Zealand by a, some family out there convinced to be that that mm-hmm. was his his family for the longest time until someone could no longer take it and told him the truth. Okay. This recently, like I said, came out in October of 2022. Um, He apparently knew about this much longer than October of mm-hmm. 2022. He wrote a letter to Diana, supposedly, and she had said letter and she was going to announce it. Hence the big announcement of a child. Mm. Uh-huh. And that is when my mind changed to, holy shit, it was never the queen. It was never, oh, and also Prince Philip's documentary of just his life and all that kind of stuff. And also to really, truly understand the, how much the queen loves those boys the way that she did. No one loving those boys the way that she did would ever hate their mother to the extent that they claimed that that woman hated her mother, their mother. I don't, there will no. always... There will be a resentment if you hated her that much. I think there was a resentment between the two of them. Between, I think there was a power play, but... Oh, I, between Diana and the Queen? Yes. Yeah. But I don't think that she hated hated her the way that the media made it out to be. Because if they did, the Queen would resent the boys. No, who truly hated her was Philip, Because she made her his family look like fools. Because they are. Like I said, Diana called bullshit multiple times on that family. Yes, but even he didn't hate her. No, I still believe he fucking hated her. No, I don't. Maybe not at first. No. But if, towards the end of it, absolutely. It fucking oops, shit, that was me. If she did, if he did, he kept that very hidden because even the boys didn't know that. Well, yeah, no, because he has, he still has to put on a show. Remember, the show must go on. Yeah. But behind closed doors. But that's the problem. Harry saw a side of his grandparents nobody else got to because at the end of the day, those were his grandparents. And he he did just like his mom. He put himself in a place that he should not have been in. But I'm going to tell you the same thing right now. I worship and adore my grandparents and I see them as idols. But I didn't know them back in the fucking day when they were shysty people and alcoholics. I can understand that. So I get where you're coming from. And, and you love this man and you trust his word. But he still doesn't know them as really individuals. He knows them as grandparents. Oh, he knows a lot. You got to read his. You got to read his book. I've read parts and pieces. It's really hard to read. Sorry, but he also, Harry. He also said his brother was abusive. Oh, I could probably see be, that and would beat the shit out of everybody, um, including him. I can see that to a certain extent. So the only like, person I can't see that for is his his wife. I don't think he would do that. But we don't know what happens behind their closed doors. But all I'm saying is what Philip, his history, and what he has done. And what he has said and his distaste for certain people and his forcement of the marriage and that he needed to have this perfect little lifestyle oh. for the royal family. I think it makes more sense. I think he finally wanted to have one of his children not look like so much of a fuck up. And well, yeah, that's all he ever wanted. All of them messed up. Correct. And then he gets... Shout out, though, to Prince Charles's sister because there is the rumor that while... Charles was um, being unfaithful with Camilla. His sister did one for Diana and fucked Camilla's husband while they were married. Oh, shit. Well, there you go. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but I want to think it is. And that sounds great. I think it was Anne. Go you, babe. But still, at the end of the day, like, he picked out this perfect wife for his son, which he imagined was perfect. Got it all set up. Everything was perfect. They weren't. They weren't perfect. We no. know that. But in his eyes at the time, it was perfect. Until she started. She broke a lot of rules. She started fucking breaking down walls. And he automatically, this man wants a perfect life. You are fucking with this man's ego. Okay? You know what's really. You're starting to make a fucking enemy. Yeah. Well, you know what's really funny is he wasn't a king. So he had no right to get into that mode. But that's the way he was. He had a huge ego. Yeah. But you had to look. You had to present yourself a certain way. Like I said, it's funny because he was never a king. But still, regardless of the situation. It's not his job to have an ego of a certain look. That is his wife's job and how she wants things to be done was going to be done. And that's how it should have been because at the end of the day, that woman was the queen. I don't care of the 1950s lifestyle, the 1960s lifestyle, and how the woman had to bow to the man. 
she was queen. She had higher ranks on him any day of the week. Yeah, but that's not how that's not how they ruled the royal household. No, they couldn't because at the end of the day, her vow was the word obey. Bay. Yes, and, uh, and Diana the, we, we all said, knew who actually that up. Yes, we all knew who actually ruled that household, and that's why I'm always saying it's not always Elizabeth. Granted, yes, was she brought up extremely? I'm sorry, racist. Yes, she was. That was her lifestyle. That was her ancestry. That's what they believed in. But this man executed practices. So back on Diana. <laughs> Just saying. Before you get even more passionate passionate about Philip. Um, I'm going to show you the pictures of this guy. His name is Simon, by mm-hmm. the way. Yeah, his name's Simon Charles Durante Day. And uh, ironically enough, when uh, this was coming out... When Simon was coming out, Charles was trying to deny Harry. Mm-hmm. And there was rumor and speculation that Charles wanted a DNA test because the whole, the rumor of Diana cheating. I think cheating, I slightly remember that when I was younger. The rumor yeah. of Diana cheating with um, the polo player, which is uh, really ironic that she was cheating with a polo player because she hated polo. He loved polo. Charles loved polo. Diana mm-hmm. hated it. But it's also really funny because both her boys play it. Um, especially Harry, he's a really great polo player, um, which is also what fed into the whole, oh, he's because he's, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. That's Simon. Yeah, I don't know. They're both still ugly as sin. Well, uh, Camilla was ugly as fuck, too. Well, yeah, she was. She, honestly, though, she actually looks prettier now than she did when she was younger. Um, I see it. I, I, there was a picture of Camilla next to that. I see it. And I could, I could see it a little bit. Here's the thing. If it's true. It would be definitely be something up Diana's alley because she was all about exposing that family. That's the actual next in line. Yeah. Sorry, William, that you went through all the bullshit you had to go through. Maybe you should listen to Harry. But I, why won't they do a DNA test? They shut him down fast. This they got paid off, him off. This got off the internet real fucking quick. And I screenshotted it because I was just mind blown. No idea why I felt like I had to screenshot it. Maybe because today we're talking about this conversation of Diana. She had a letter from this guy. I could see that. I could see that. I still think that um, she made a lot of enemies banning landmines. And she cost a lot of people money. And we know how that goes. Even to this day for a lot of people. You play with people's money, they're going to play with you. Yeah. Well, to this day... She's a very loved woman. Um, well, yeah, she's she was an amazing individual. Was at times she's very shysty? Yeah, but we all, all can be. She was a fucking boss. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, if, if they're going to play that game, why can't two play that game? And I don't... I don't think any less of her for some of the very shysty things that she did with the paparazzi. No. She loved pop culture. At the end of the day, she loved pop culture. And she knew how to play it. She liked and it. And she's going to be played. Why not play the system? Yeah. Unfortunately, William was 15 at the time and Harry was 12. So those boys do remember their mother. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people forget that and how old they actually were mm-hmm. in yeah. their life when they passed or when she died. She was BFFs with the Sir Elton John, mm-hmm. who, thank you to that wonderful man, actually really helped jump in and help with those boys harry is very very close with him and actually elton um helped harry when megan and harry moved to america and they didn't know what to do and of course they didn't know what to do so all you fuckers who want to get on their asses harry has had everything done for him his whole fucking life he has never had to do anything himself so of course he had no idea what the fuck to do Mm mm-hmm it makes all the fucking sense. So everybody's like, oh, my gosh. Like, he's just sitting here crying because he just doesn't know what to do. Duh, dumbasses. He was royal. He had his ass wiped for him until he's 26. Gah. I hate <laughs> when people don't think. That's I'm sorry. I hate when people just don't think. But um, thank you to, you know, Sir Elton John for always keeping an eye on the boys. He he did that for Diana, which I think is great. Um, also, she did go to a lot of, of uh, gay things. Because of her, Mm -hmm. which she did it very secretively and everybody thought that she was going to be very prudish about it because of being, you know, very not sexually educated. And she enjoyed it so much. She just thought it was great because she loved pop culture. I love one of her first things, but 
when AIDS was a huge thing and they thought we could get it through skin contact. Oh, gosh. That's and so she awesome. found out right away that you couldn't. And one of the first pictures of her is shaking an AIDS patient's hand. And it was a huge oh, fucking I remember that. uproar. And, like, that was the most badass move. Yeah, because it was to prove something. That yeah. and when she wore that that scandalous Deadless dress. dress. Yeah. Oof, love yep. it. Um, to continue her charitable efforts, so Diana does have a memorial fund. And that is actually still going on. Uh, a lot of her stuff, though, is not very local, unfortunately. They did do a re- recently in 2015. They had a um, an an honoring of Diana, mm-hmm. and um, they had like this like memorial recently. Not recent. Well, it was somewhat recent because it's a big to do, and the fact that the king's wife did not show up. And the reason she did not show up is because uh, she was whining that people were making comments about her. And it hurt her feelings. Well, <clears throat> sucks to suck. Apparently, she was invited by the bo- Even the boys were like, you know, you are more than welcome to come to this very big... But that just shows how petty she is. Nope, she didn't show like, up. Like, at least you should have just, like, came out of respect. Like, no. No, her husband... And the boys both um, asked her to be there, and she said no. I don't want to. Well, karma's bitch. Yeah. Isn't that funny? So. Well, nobody likes Camilla. I'm pretty sure that's like a census. I want to say also big power move, the queen um, for the, obviously, for for Charles' wedding. Wedding? Yeah. She wore, with Diana, she wore a beautiful, like, mint green dress Mm -hmm. outfit thing, her little cute little suits. Um, Camilla's wedding, she wore white. Yep. <laughs> she wore white. Well, you know, the town whore's getting married. Why can't I wear white, too? <laughs> well, Camilla didn't even wear white at her wedding with Charles. I feel like that point, that was it was a civil wedding, they called it. I'm surprised Elizabeth still even let her son didn't go through with it. At that point, I feel like she figured at I, I She's like, I'm going to die soon. Who gives a fuck anymore? She lived way too long after that, though. Yeah, she did. But um, she really thought she was going to die soon. She lived. We on. all did. It was a tie between her and Betty. Betty White. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Okay. I was like, I... There's only one Betty in my eyes. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just make sure. Fun fact of the day, though, guys, as we get off here in a minute, uh, Marilyn Monroe and the Queen were born in the exact same year if Marilyn Monroe were alive. Oh, that's a good one to come up next. She would have been the exact same age as the Queen. And much more attractive. Who knows how she would have aged, but regardless, she was hot as hell then. And not racist. No, far from it. Oh, you yeah. know what, guys? Stay tuned. Yeah. Let me you, just shut up. You might hear something next week. But I'd love to know your guys' theories. What do you think yes. about it? You Please know, tell us, us know. tell us your thoughts about the, the Princess Diana. Tell me how much you love Prince Harry and that you still want to call him Prince because he deserves it. And I hope him and Meghan are doing wonderfully well and... um I won't get on my soapbox about You've that woman. You've got a hard one for that man. For both of them. For both of them. Both of them. Yes. But. I do. He's gr- He is his mother. He is his mother. She even, when he was a child, would call him my little Spencer. Because William looked so much like fucking Charles. So when she had Harry and already found out, you know, his father hated him from the day he was born mm-hmm. and it shows still to this fucking day even though when he gets his cancer operation, Harry's on the first plane home. Mhm. And William's nowhere to be seen. Yes. But he was born, he was hated by his father and he looked like her and her family and he does actually look like her family. Yeah. There is no cheating involved. He she he genuinely looks like her family. So I think it made her feel a little bit more at home because she was away from the rest of them. Let me know what you guys think. I want to hear your guys' theories. No more no, no more about the royals, though. We're not doing any more of this shit. I hate the royals. Sorry. <laughs> I just think it's funny. Like I said, in the 1700s, you know, we did a whole war on getting away from them and we still can't get out of the royals' asses. No. We still want to know what the crown's doing to this day. And yet we still kind of revert back to their policies. Time yeah. to throw that tea back into the harbor. But on that note, I'll let you close out. <laughs> Make sure you guys like, follow all the thingies and the doodads. And let... Until next time, guys. Bye. Bye.